And we are back on this Monday, the football season getting closer for almost everyone. And uh, that includes our next guest, Brian Kelly of LSU. We'll see him Sunday night in Vegas uh, in, in the marquee matchup of the weekend against Southern Cal. First of all, Coach, it, it's great to uh, talk to you again. I hope you've had a good summer. We have. Thanks, Paul. Uh, but it's good to get back to um, what has been uh, for re you know, for me, uh, you know, uh, an interesting summer because, you know, we had to um, certainly uh, replace a lot of good players. Um, so, you know, as you know, there's a lot of balls up in the air now with the transfer portal and uh, NIL. Uh, but it was, uh, it was one where we were able to recharge the battery and, and get ready for another exciting year of college football. I'd like to start first uh, from the from inside the coaching staff. There, there, there were a number of changes, uh, and it, it seems complicated, but you've done it a few times. I mean, how difficult is that to integrate uh, new coordinators into your system? Well, I think if you have a process in place, standards set, um, it, it's a lot easier because then then you're really just teaching them you know, what is your way? What is your culture? What what are you about? Um, this is my fifth defensive coordinator. You know, Mike Elko st started with Mike um, eight years ago. We've, you know, we've had seven consecutive 10 win seasons with five different defensive coordinators. Clark Lee, uh, obviously, along the way, uh, Marcus Freeman, uh, and then we got here. Uh, so, you know, we've continued that process uh, along the way. Offensive coordinators, Mike Denbrock, Tommy Reese, uh, Chip Long. And now, you know, obviously, uh, you know, we we continue to move in the same direction with the same process. So, you know, as long as you do that and, and have a culture that's in place, uh, then you just go out and hire the very, very best. And, and I think with um, with Blake in particular and Joe Sloan, um, Blake Baker is going to do a, a great job for us defensively, and we just plug them in uh, and let them be who they are and, and let them go out and coach and, and develop our players. Coach, you mentioned something. I wanted to make sure I didn't lose sight of it because uh, in today's world where it's so hard to, to be consistent, uh, mentioning the, ten, the streak of 10-win seasons is, is pretty extraordinary. Uh, I know I'm asking you to comment about yourself, but uh, I really would like to hear your, your thoughts on, on, on that accomplishment. Well, seven consecutive 10-win uh, seasons, as you know, um, you know, you have to have really good players. And, and uh, I mentioned to you, you know, uh, three names, all, all three of them are head football coaches, and Elko and Lee and and Marcus Freeman. So you have to have a great staff. And, and I've been blessed with a great staff, with great players. But I think it's what I said at the outset. You, you need to have a process. You need to have something that's consistent on a day-to-day -day basis to be able to do that year in and year out. And now, look, we want to win a national championship. And, and I'm not here to sit on this show right now and say, you know, 10 wins is, is the ultimate goal. It's to win national championships. And there are other coaches that have done much better. Um, but we've been consistent in what we've done year in and year out. Um, we just want to take that next step, and that is to win a national championship. And it starts uh, internally with your team, and, and you know, everyone starts off talking about LSU by saying you're replacing the Heisman Trophy winner. You're, you're replacing a player like, like Malik Neighbors. I mean, that, that's a lot right there, but it seems like, uh, at least from a quarterback standpoint and a few other positions, you feel very comfortable with what you have. I think everybody in college football, Paul, is going to replace somebody. You know, Caleb Williams is, you know, obviously no longer at USC. I mean, there's great players all over the country that each year, you know, you have to be poised and positioned uh, to replace great players. And, you know, that's the case here, right? Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas, uh, Jaden Daniels. Uh, we, we had some really good players on defense, Makai Wingo, Mason Smith. Um, you know, the list goes on. So, um, developing players, getting them in a position where they can come in. But Garrett Nussmeyer waited for his opportunity to come in and played outstanding in the bowl game and the ReliQuest bowl game and, and and led us to a victory, as you can see from the graphic, three, 395 yards. And, um, and this, you know, hook up here to Brian Thomas, you won't have him. But he's got – very good wide receivers that he can rely on. He's got an outstanding offensive line. Uh, and, and we're going to be who we are. We're not going to have the prolific, you know, big players, big time players that we had last year, but we're going to have really good football players 
that we're going to be able to be a balanced offense, uh, score the points that we need to, and then we're just going to have to be, as you know, Paul, we're going to be much better on defense. And, and that's going to be the key here is uh, playing much better defense in the SEC. Continuing with, with Coach Brian Kelly, uh, scheduling is so critical, and we already know what you have and have known for some time within the SEC, and nobody has an easy schedule. But when you start out uh, against a Southern Cal on top of UCLA a couple weeks later, Ole Miss, uh, Alabama, Oklahoma, the new uh, kid on the block along with Texas, let's start with, let's start with USC and, and, and the significance of a game like this. Well, well, certainly, you know, when you talk about USC, the, the, the rich tradition and history of that program uh, is one where, you know, it gets everybody's attention. And, and certainly, you know, these kinds of games, uh, you know, get the players' attention when, when they're, they're working out. And, you know, they know who they're playing. And, and look, they also know that we haven't had much success in our last two openers. But having said that, we played a lot of freshmen in that opener against Florida State two years ago. And those freshmen are, are playing prominent roles for us. Harold Perkins, uh, Will Campbell, Emory Jones. You know, we have a lot of freshmen that played those first two openers. And so now they're veterans, if you will. And we expect that those battle scars from those first two years of, of playing a Florida State team that was pretty good um, are going to pay off in this opener against USC. Uh, and I didn't mention that uh, that, was, uh, that was a regular game for you uh, at Notre Dame, so you're pretty familiar with – you don't need the, an education on the tradition uh, of this program. But I want to talk about that, that, that standalone game. You mentioned the two games at Florida State. Uh, the first one uh, down to the final play, uh, what, uh, you, you said attention. Uh, I mean, I know your team is excited, but uh, ha what do you sense? What do you, what do you see when you start practice and even in the spring when you have a game like that to begin with? Well, it's an interesting question, Paul. I mean, I think in some instances, if, if, if your team needs to get up for USC or get the attention of your club for a game like USC, um, that that's probably not a good thing uh, because they don't probably have the the traits necessary um, to to be an elite team. Our, our guys didn't need USC. They know what's expected at LSU, and that is the standards are high. It's about championships, and so um, as much as it's a great matchup and and we're excited about it, our our players didn't need USC this year. Um, to know that they have to uh, do the things necessary uh, that champions do. And, and that's a good feeling for me as a head coach. Uh, we didn't have to remind them that we're opening with, uh, with USC and we have uh, no margin for error. And so that's what's a little bit different about this team, Paul, from maybe the first two years where, you know, you needed to kind of say, hey, look, uh, you, you better be on top of your work because of we're playing a really good Florida State team. We didn't need to remind them. Uh, they're too far into this now in terms of understanding what it takes to be a champion. And Coach, Coach finally, uh, games like this, uh, I mean, nobody has played three uh, more high-profile games in the last three years than you have. W what is the future of games like this now that we're in this new iteration of the 12-team playoff? That's a good question. Um, you know, we were, we were pretty far down the road, you know, relative to this game and, and the respect that we have for – you know the Las Vegas, um, you know, uh, you know people that that they put this game on, and you know we were not going to see that this game happened, right? But moving forward, I think these are harder conversations uh, that will will take place relative to uh, those that make these these final decisions, because you know with the twelve team playoff. Um, you know, these games become harder decisions relative to, you know, playing them. Uh, so, again, I'm, I don't have to sit in those conversations. Uh, I'm, I'm required to play them and win them. Uh, I don't have to make those decisions. But as you can imagine, because your, your question is a, a valid question, you know, these will be harder decisions to make relative to seeing these games be played. Coach, uh, we can't wait to, to see this game, and I know a lot of folks here are going to be pulling for you uh, in that game on, on Sunday night. We hope, to, we, hope, we hope it goes well, and we will talk to you very, very soon. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for having me on. You Look bet. forward to seeing you next week.
Thanks so much. Brian Kelly joining us on the eve of the college football season. We'll take a short break. Mm-hmm. 